it's Tuesday. I mean, I think it's loud. Super Tuesday here on Digital Charcuterie. Thanks for joining me. As always, we got Scotty and Steve joining us on the show today because we're talking all things superhero movie Hi, related. Tuesday. Hi, Daddy, indeed. <laughs> it's turned into a different type of video. We've got one Hi, viewer. <laughs> we have one viewer for sure. Guys, thanks for joining me today. Thanks. Glad to be here. Always glad to talk nerdy when I unmute myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a lot better when you unmute. Guys, we got a great show today. If you are new to the channel, new to the show, the way it works is we take topics. We start off with some emails, then we just talk about superheroes all day long. If you have a superhero topic you would like us to talk about, email us at digitalsharcuterie at gmail.com. Send it in, and we will talk about it. And these are our topics on today's show right here. We got some email questions. They're going to be regarding the Penguin, the Batverse featuring Superman. That's Matt Reeves' Batverse. She-Hulk rewrites. Uh-oh, is an MCU in trouble? We don't know. Morbius just released a new trailer. Werewolf by Night News. Doctor Strange 2. And, of course, the Batman because the Batman is right around the corner. Most of you have seen it by now. We haven't because we're sad sacks. We have to wait. <laughs> but, we, but we will. <laughs> we are going to see it this week, though. We promise. And when we do, uh, Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, will be a non-spoiler discussion, and Friday from 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time will be a full-on spoiler dis discussion of that show. But before we get into it, let's just get into the show now, guys. Let's just get right into it. I'm going to add it in. Our first email. Hello, do you think the Penguin in the Batman will be iconic like Danny DeVito or others? He just looks like a normal gangster to me. Thanks, Felix Kutcher. So, guys, the Penguin is obviously in this movie. Uh, if you listen to Colin Farrell's interviews over the last little while, he's really letting it be known that he's only in five or six scenes. I saw a few reviews earlier in the week that kind of said they were disappointed by his screen, the amount of screen time he had, how his character's not a main player in this. But, Scotty, I'm going to start with you. Do you think that Colin Farrell's Penguin could ever be as iconic as, say, Danny DeVito or Burgess Meredith? Everything that they're doing with this character to me says that it's very possible. Uh, all these actors that are willing to transform their bodies. Um, Joaquin Phoenix literally just came off iconic rated R DC villain role. His show is supposed to be rated R for the penguin. He's yeah. all in, obviously. He's like, you know, going through these massive changes. I heard him say that his kid was terrified of him when he first saw him. He didn't even recognize him. So. Uh, yeah, I'm all in on a lot of this universe, man. There's a lot of reasons to be hyped behind the show. Yeah, I think, you know, the show's obviously coming, Steve, but in the movie, do you think in the movie he'll be iconic or is he just going to be a background forgettable character? No, I think they're going to make him make him memorable. Um, there's a reason they're giving him his own show. So you know, however many scenes he's in in the movie, they're, they're, they're going to be building towards a show. So I think for sure they're going to they're gonna do something wild with him. I think after that show is done, Scotty, when that show comes and goes and we've seen however many episodes it is, they're saying it's going to be like a Scarface type show. I think the Penguin is going to be, I think he already is a top tier Batman villain. Everybody knows the Penguin, right? I think he is going to be a lot of people's new favorite. I think, I don't want to, I'm not comparing the show. So don't, I don't want to be, I don't want you to take it this way, but I think kind of like how Peacemaker is now, upper echelon superhero that can do that with the penguin in terms of villain. And I, I, and I'm not comparing the shows. They're going to be very different tonally, but I think the fact that people love peacemaker now, I think this, that's what this show can do for the penguin. You can look at the penguin in a new light almost for the first time. And if he is like, could you imagine if this show is like Scarface, how wicked would that be? With the HBO uh, title and the rated R like no limit essentially to what they can do with this guy. It's, I mean, this whole thing's nuts. And I, I really do think they are setting him up to even be maybe the main villain of a second movie or a very, a very high up player. Hopefully that show ends before we get the second movie and he can just bounce right back into that role. I was going to love it if they, if they intertwine, but Steve, I got, I'm bringing over to you. We can hear your kids in the, in the background. That's why I want to ask you this question though. Do you think that this Batman universe that they're creating is almost too far removed for families. And Scotty, oh, for sure. I'll let you answer that after too. 
Yeah, I like. I have no intention to let my kids see this movie whatsoever. <laughs> they can buy the Lego <laughs> set. That's fine. But there's no way my kids are seeing this movie. But that's that's just me. I'm no, no judgment on whatever parents uh, decide for themselves. But yeah, there's no way. Even some of their PG thirteen stuff, I'm like. And then, like, I got my my seven year olds watching some of the Bad Batch episodes, and I don't know if we talked about this before, but like, they got headshots in these shows, and like, stormtroopers, <laughs> stormtroopers, literally eating it hard. So, um, yeah, like, and my kids are asking me every day about Batman because it's coming up in conversations with people I know. So, uh, it's a tough one. It is for sure. That, yeah, yeah, that that is tough because Batman and Steve. We talked about this a little bit not record not on air but before where your kids aren't into batman as much but batman is such an iconic hero that it's look, they're the, almost the, the, missing the, out the biggest exposure they've had to batman is the lego batman movie right because yeah. there haven't been any, many batman movies that are geared for kids and that's they're not, that not. I'm saying you need to make a kids movie but there hasn't yeah. been for, i mean there's been animated stuff but not, nothing that's going to grab them like the the live action would when I, when I was a kid, I had all the, the animated stuff, Super Friends, Batman and Robin, Scooby-Doo meets Batman. I had them all. And then I had the Adam West show. And I would watch that show. It wasn't weekly when I watched it. I'm pretty sure it was daily. And it would be like, same bad time, same bad channel. And it would be on right after and you would watch it and, and whatnot. But that show, uh, I guess it was for adults when it first came out. And it was can't be comedy. I don't really understand what it was. But when I was a kid, that was Batman, right? That was, was awesome. Badass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But but the kids don't have that exposure anymore, and this it, the Penguin show is definitely not it, and and Peacemaker is definitely not it, and maybe H, and maybe you know we talked about this I think it was last week where DC has a plan right there's this DC plan now, and maybe this plan is we're not going to be your family friendly superhero channel we you we'll let Marvel Marvel has owned that right they've done a great job with it no one is, has ever said otherwise so maybe we'll let Marvel own that and we'll focus on the adults and we'll tell these more R rated adult stories however that being said the, the one stipulation Matt Reeves had guys was that Batman had to be PG-13 he was not allowed to make it R oh interesting well, I mean, even even Shazam, like I took my son to, to see Shazam, uh, that one, you know, it's more geared for kids. It was the most Marvel like DC movie that they, that they've ever made. But even there, you know, there's a scene with the with the demons that scared the crap out of him. He was he was <laughs> afraid of that one. So mm-hmm. but so, so, yeah, like based on that, there's no way we're, we're watching this new Batman. Not for a while. anyway. Well, you have to see it first and figure it out. Uh, Scotty, good, anything you want to add to hunch. that? <laughs> uh, only thing I want to add is I uh, some companies are really good at this balance and some aren't. And I find it funny how Lego Batman and Lego like Joker Land, that kind of stuff, really they do no wrong. Like their stuff is highly anticipated when it's coming out. I hope that someday people look at like Star Wars in the same way. Like, just have Lego stuff for your kids. There's, like, OT stuff for us old guys. I feel like we're in this transitionary period right now. And DC Mm -hmm. is kind of getting it right, man, because they're telling these live-action stories in a darker Batman vein. They still have their Lego stuff. They still even have some of the HBO Max, like, Titans and, like, not as intense, like, canon-wise. And it all is kind of being successful. Uh, It's pretty pretty crazy like i haven't seen batman yet but if it is good right and it doesn't focus and it is dark and gritty and blah 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 it could stand the test of time it could be a movie that you can watch in 20 years it could be a movie that because it's not going to rely on other movies and that's what i'm i'm very interested like i just watched zodiac like a year ago it's been a long time Mm -hmm. it feels like yesterday but i think it was like a it was like right when the pandemic hit i watched zodiac because that movie is phenomenal which this one apparently takes a lot from which is great because that movie's so good but that movie stands the test of time right and if they do that right with with the batman it, it doesn't need to to it doesn't need to focus on the kids because steve your kids won't watch it now, but maybe they'll watch it in 20 years and they'll be like, why didn't my dad let me watch this? <laughs> this well, is I, art. <laughs> I tried to start in the middle ground with watching Batman Begins with him and he's 20,000 questions. So I was like, all Actually, right. Scotty, that. Scotty, have your kids watched Batman Begins? Like the, the Nolan stuff? Or, we or haven't. Any, no. Nolan's? No, we haven't watched any of that. No, we're a we're like, Star Wars household over here, really. Star- <laughs> a lot of Marvel, you know, they ask about Captain America and stuff yeah. like that. But, um, DC is not really 
it's not other than Lego, other than Lego Batman. Mm-hmm. All about that yeah. for sure. It's it's funny how um well I, I I was from 81. So like I had the Superman movies with Christopher Reeves and then I had yeah. uh, the Adam West of sure, but it, but then the Tim Burton Batman and then and then the Val Kilmer Batman and then George like it was all DC and we were always like like you know we loved Marvel growing up it's like Spider-Man Spider-Man and then that Spider-Man movie hit mm-hmm. and it just was like pitch perfect but I'm really excited for this. I think by the end of the HBO run um Colin Farrell's penguin will be iconic. I do. I think he will be he will be the uh the on the pedestal. He will be the penguin that we all look up and say that is the quintessential penguin, much like definitive. Uh, yeah, the definitive one, like Heath Ledger, people consider Heath Ledger the Joker. I think that'll be with Colin Farrell, right? Where maybe I'm not saying I was like the gonna same say level. that, but I didn't want to be the only one, man. <laughs> I got that feeling. The whole transformation of the way, like you don't even recognize the people in the role. That's what I'm talking about. It's you know, when, that in itself is you, iconic. There's a, a movie in the Line of Fire, I think, with with Clint Eastwood and uh, John Malkovich. If you guys remember that movie, yeah. like 1991. Yeah. I love. There's John a part. Yeah, so good. But there's a part in it when Clint Eastwood's like, how? Like he's like, I saw your eyes. I saw your eyes. I know. So I'm, I look at the penguin and I look in his eyes. I'm like, I still don't see Colin Farrell in there. Like, where the hell is yeah, Colin dude. Farrell? Like, he's gone. He's his just own gone. children don't recognize <laughs> him. Know. Like, come on. Like, if you can't tell from the eyes, you're crazy. It's insane. Yeah. All right, let's move on though, because that's we're we're I don't I think we're all excited for this penguin show to see what it is. And Scarface is I mean, say hello to my little friend. He's got an umbrella instead of a machine gun. <laughs> bring it, bring it. All right, our, <laughs> let's bring on our next email question. Our next email says, hey, I am seeing the Batman Tuesday, braggart. Lucky. I'm so excited. No, seriously. And I'm so excited. I know Reeves isn't keen on bringing in Superman or other characters, but do you think his Batverse could exist in one similar to Man of Steel, with Superman being a legit alien? Thank you, Devin Artledge. I, so th- this thing is blown up now with Matt Reeves, where he did an interview, I think, with Collider, and he said, you know, blah, blah, blah. If Superman were to appear, he'd have to be an alien, and we have to go all through that. And what I like about this email is, is the Man of Steel movie is the movie that would exist within, from what I can tell, this Reeves one. It definitely feels like the movie that would exist within the Christopher Nolan Batman movies, where, where Superman just doesn't appear. He appears as an alien, right? It's like an alien invasion movie almost. And you're like, what is going on? And it would have you'd have to be more because it's someone with superpowers, that's not on our planet. So if something that happened, you'd have to tell that in a more realistic way. Um, but I don't think we're, I don't think Matt Reeves is ever going to get to a Superman in his stories. I think if he does the trilogy, like was originally reported, I don't think Superman will have a place in there. And I don't think the Pattinson, Pattinson Batman is going to get to Superman at all. Steve, I know you're a huge Superman fan. Does that disappoint you? Oh, who told you that? <laughs> uh, oh no, I mean it's it's known. I'm not a big Superman fan, so if they keep him out of the bat, the, this new Bat verse, I'm totally fine with that. It uh, keeps it grounded, keeps it, you know. I'm, I'm not going to say realistic. You know, we're talking about Batman here, but uh, I, I like that sense of uh, uh, levity, so to speak, with uh, you know just keeping Superman out of it. It'd be fun to have little nods, you know, little little references about Metropolis or stuff like that. But no, I have no desire to see Bat- uh, Superman in this universe whatsoever. So keep it. I'm fine with that. Scotty, how about you? Yeah, I kind of am saying the same thing as uh, what he's saying. Um, I don't think it's necessary. I think it could stay like the Nolan trilogy. I think if fans want it or if fans find some Easter eggs within the trilogy that are like at the most, like this is might be a, a big stretch, but bring in a Lex Corp or bring in like, some kind of a thing that Batman's also dealing with as far as crime or um, just show across the Harbor, like that other place and don't mention it. That kind of, that kind of stuff. I, I'm okay yeah. with, I'm okay with Metropolis being in this universe because I said to Steve earlier, it's Gotham is a fictional city. Metropolis is a fictional city. You, if you can have fictional cities exist within themselves, <laughs> It's weird that we're saying how we don't want Superman in this world <laughs> when the MCU is all like everything's got to be connected, and then there's argue like we talk and like Wonder Woman need a more connection. Wonder Woman two need a more connection to to the Justice League and stuff, and Aquaman needs more connect. But then the Batman movie, we're like just stay away from everything, just stay just stay away. And I, you know what's funny though is is 
what he said and what I was just saying about Matt Reeves' comments is when this movie was first coming up, it was the Batfleck Batman movie, right? It was supposed to be the Batfleck movie. They approached Matt Reeves. He said, I don't want to do this movie in this mm-hmm. DCEU. I want to do what I want to do. And then when it's funny because the, the last Super Tuesday that I did before we revived it was Jake Gyllenhaal turning down the Batman for Matt Reeves. It was whether or not that was hmm. true or not, we don't know. Mm-hmm. I think it was speculation, but that was the last one we did. And it's funny because at the time we all assumed that this what he was doing a prequel to Batman v Superman and, and the Ben Affleck Batman, right? We all assumed that it was going to be a prequel to what we had seen, which again kind of would exist in this same world when you actually think about it, because because of the Man of Steel, because before the Man of Steel, aliens don't exist. Metahumans only exist in Batman v Superman, and they're not like they're kind of like just coming up. And obviously, Wonder Woman and Aquaman are around, but no one knows about them. So it's intriguing to me that he's saying this, and it still kind of fits in the same timeline as it's obviously not in the DCEU, but it kind of fits in that timeline and the stream of the DCEU. I think uh, DC kind of has it easier because where Marvel has literally a sacred timeline. Let's where move on else... now to <laughs> Maybe our he lost next me. question. Oh. Did you lose us? <laughs> I hear you, bro, loud and clearly. I got clear. you. I got you. I froze. Sorry, Scotty. Yeah. I oh, froze. no, it's so all I good. Continue. I was just saying, I think DC has it easier in the respect that like Marvel has one solid timeline that the rules kind of have to shape around, but DC has multiple universes with all their own sets that could potentially connect through Barry Allen or whatever, anytime they want, like they can just use Barry Allen as the scapegoat to just a reset button or change a certain thing in a show. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that was it. Yeah, he he might be gone, gone. <laughs> James, come back. He's thinking. He's in deep thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. I froze. Have Scotty continue. Yep, carrying it, carrying the torch. <laughs> <laughs> you back? With what us, was James? the next topic here? <laughs> I see him. He's there's some life. Well, the next topic, I can tell you, I can't pull up the readers, uh, the viewers email, but I know it was talking about She-Hulk and how there's been a lot rewrites. of rumors, rewrites about that. And is it going to affect the show? And I don't know. I mean, for me, I don't mind the fact that there's rewrites. I mean, I don't think it's delaying production at all. I don't know how that can spell possibly spell doom to if anything if it's rewrites there there's got to be a rewrite for a reason they're trying to make it either connect or they're trying to make it just make more sense Mm -hmm. i don't know i'm i don't i don't get i don't get freaked out i don't panic when i hear things like the show's being rewritten um you know obviously there's a reason marvel has a i just said earlier a singular grand vision for for the universe they want to put out there so eh, i don't know i'm I'm not i'm not going to sweat the fact that they're rewriting what do you think yep same Uh, I think a lot of shows go through rewrites and if I have faith in anybody making calculated rewrites, it's uh, Feige and I'm, and maybe even they're rewriting it and adding in like the Matt Murdock daredevil character because he is a lawyer. And I think that was a rumor uh, when that show first got made and everybody was talking about him being in the Spider-Man. They're like, okay, well he is technically a lawyer. Does um, she Hulk run into him? I can't remember her name. Uh, the, uh, yeah, yeah, it just it just spaced Jessica. on me. Is it Jessica? <laughs> it's right there. Oh, I know. Yeah, but <laughs> anyways, um, well, it kind of goes back to uh, what, I, what I said last week with the um, one of the deleted scenes for the uh, Spider-Man movie talks about uh, um, Happy's lawyer, and my call was, I bet you it's She-Hulk, and that you know, if they're now rewriting and tying in uh, Daredevil in the Vat, that could play in the Vat as well. I would love that. Yeah. No. I think it would be a nice little riff too of uh, like him, like uh, Murdoch defending him against her, or she's a prosecutor, or something like that. Even mm-hmm. that that could be funny. Ties together those two worlds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he said, "If we're out of thoughts, just to pause." I don't know if he can edit afterwards, but 
I'm not sure either. <laughs> Morbius was next. Morbius was next. Does Vulture know Peter Parker? And he has information, I think, on the Werewolf by Night stuff. That's good because I know nothing about that. Werewolf by Night. That one is yeah. complete unknown to me, which I'm actually excited for. Mm-hmm. I like it when I don't know the characters at all because then you go in for a completely clean slate. So, yeah, all I know about the Werewolf by Night stuff is that it could potentially tie into like um, Blade and all of the demonic side of things. Yeah, it's not yeah. a it's not a TV show a series, right? It's just like a, a special. I think it is going to be a show. Or... Oh, okay. I thought it was like yeah, a Halloween season. special. Yeah, this is where like the stuff gets kind of weird because like one scoop says this thing, and then you hear about a casting, but they're not related. And um, mm. yeah, who? Ethan Hawke. Did I hear Ethan Hawke was the one in that? Maybe not. Maybe he's in Moon Knight. I. Th- that's the the, that's that's character. ringing a bell. Yeah. yeah, Moon Knight's another one that you know strikes where I don't know much about the character, so I'm excited for that. But yeah, I think Ethan Hawke is tied to Moon Knight. He said, "I'll be back." <laughs> Just to pause. <laughs> Thought I had bad internet, man. Oof. <laughs> He's this is spotty at best. I'm Jenny's back. Uh, but hey. what a nice guy he is, I tell you. I wasn't saying anything bad at all. <laughs> we can't see back. you. You're blacked out. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Mm-hmm. Can, Can you, you hear you? us? And the camera's good. We can see you now. We can hear you. Can you hear us? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Sounds like we're still delayed, though. I hear That's you. Ridiculous. All right, we're good for the next topic. Yeah. You want to talk about She-Hulk? Did you have stuff you knew about it, or just want to talk about reshoots or rewrites? Man, we I misread that. It's rewrites, not reshoots. Mm-hmm. That changes it a little bit. <laughs> He's going to go hit it with a hammer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel like In I'm my house. Sorry here. Oh, I hate that, dude. I hate the double shirt collar. Uh, yeah, I feel you. <laughs> okay, if we're on pause, I'm going to get a drink of water. Oh, you. Oh, okay, there, remember. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear us? Yes. I'm tethering from my phone. Okay. Been there. Okay. I can't read the question on the screen. Can you guys? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to put a full screen. Is it full screen? Can one of you read it? Just one second. So are you going to be splicing this in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I want full screen. So... Uh, Whoever wants to read it can read it. Uh, Once you start reading it, that's when the cup will be, okay? All right, Scotty, I'll let you take it. All right. I've heard about the She-Hulk rewrites. Do you think that the show will be Marvel's first misstep? I, for one, am not looking forward to it, but it is Marvel, so I will watch it. Thanks, Mario. So, She-Hulk's coming. Uh, whether we like it or not, I'm actually looking forward to She-Hulk. I like I like the Hulk, so I like all things Hulk related. Um, obviously, um, Eric Bana will be in it. Not really, but maybe after Multiverse of Madness, it will be Eric Bana. We don't hear it. and Edward Norton. It'll be and... Edward Norton. Yeah, Edward. Is, they're all showing up. It's gonna be great. I'm looking forward to it. But I did read a thing that they are they went through rewrites, and that's why it's been kind of delayed. So, I, and we don't hear about this too much with with Marvel, right? The only one. That we really heard had a lot of rewrites was Ant Man, and they ended up getting rid of Edgar Wright, and they brought in Peyton Reed, and that's what happened. So, Scotty, I'll start with you. She Hawk, yeah. Um, having rewrites on a show is a little different than reshoots. Uh, you don't hear about it a lot from Marvel, but I think um, we were talking about this before we answered actually that uh 
if I have faith in anyone doing rewrites, it's Kevin Feige. And I might even go as far as to stretch it that he could add in some Matt Murdock stuff now that like fans have responded really well to him being in the Spider-Man. So who knows, man? Uh, I'm not really too worried about it, though. I feel like it could be for the better. Hopefully they're adding more connective tissue. Yeah. How far into the shooting? She-Hawk would... Sorry, you broke up there, James. Yeah, no, I was going to let you go. So you probably don't feel like Big She Hawk would appear in a Spider Man deleted scene, but it would make sense for her to be in, in well, for Matt Murdock to appear in her show because they'd both be lawyers. Exactly. Yep. Yep. I called it. <laughs> mm-hmm. It'd be funny, too, I think, <laughs> if they were opposing lawyers, like she was a prosecutor mm-hmm. and he was defense. Yeah. Yeah. Now with the She-Hulk comics, are they a little more light? Yeah, he did say he's coming back to more. Oh. Are, are She-Hulk comics more lighthearted than than actual? Uh, Dude, it depends. It, it depends because it gets yeah. heavy. Like in the beginning, it's heavy. She is dying, and Bruce needs to save her with a blood transfusion, and that's mm-hmm. how she gains the powers. So. And then there's this whole dynamic of like, why did you do this to me? Like, I'm a monster. So they could touch on some of that stuff. Uh, They are (laughs) family and whatnot. So who knows? Like, I hope that they do. I hope they do touch on because that's something you don't really see with this Bruce Banner. Uh, That gap even between when him and Hulk are fighting, like some of that stuff in the comics is my favorite when they're actually pulled apart and Loki's torturing Bruce Banner while hulk is on planet hulk like literally two separate entities uh and everybody's really dying for a hulk centric story maybe we won't get it with the hulk and they can kind of touch on some of that stuff with her but the rights and yada 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 yeah I, yeah exactly it's the rights are a big yeah. deal obviously but you know even, i'm curious if moon knight pushes the boundaries as much as Foggy says it will. Because the one thing that the MCU never did was go dark, right? And Tony Stark has that drinking problem in the comic. They never yep. go that far. They like they kind of have glimpses up and you're all you're doing and then they shy away. They're like, nah, nah, we're not gonna go there. But again, yeah, you know, if you want to do family friendly stuff for the movies, it's very different. We don't want to do that. So I'm curious if Moon Knight pushes the limits of what they're doing maybe we they maybe they will be like you know what she hawk we're gonna we're gonna take that extra step we're gonna try to go a little bit more on the dc way of doing things and it's gonna be a hard r and there's gonna be blood and swearing everywhere i i not to not to keep going back and forth with you and i'll let uh steve get in here but they're gonna have to figure something out man (laughs) i'm telling you they're gonna have to figure some kind of adult something disney as a company like because streaming that's the one outlet they're not really in yet. But they could be very easily with Deadpool. That's that's that's, that's the easy easiest mm-hmm. way to get into that is just test the waters. They got to do something soon. Yeah, they do. And Disney, or I don't know what it's going to be in the states. It might be Hulu. I don't know. But uh, for in Canada, Steve, the Netflix Marvel shows are coming on March sixteenth. They hit tomorrow, say March first, the last day. Yes. March first is the last t- day you can you can uh, or they're on now from Netflix. So they're on Netflix mm-hmm. March sixteenth here in Canada. So they're going back. So maybe that also, guys. Steve, I'll start with you. Maybe maybe the transition of the Netflix on Disney Hulu. Is what allows them to do Marvel content, and not necessarily She-Hulk. I'm not saying She-Hulk, but I don't know. I mean, we're talking about Werewolf by Night uh, later. Maybe that's what's going to give them the, the leeway to do a little bit more adult-oriented uh, entertainment. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know what you know. What what characters would you take from that? I don't I don't know, but uh, I mean it. That those shows getting onto Disney Plus is uh, you know, it, it, it certainly helps open the doors towards a little more grittier, a little more, you know, I'm not, not necessarily you know, full on R rated, like say Peacemaker, but it definitely opens the door. And you know, maybe they'll look at the numbers, see, see how many people are actually streaming them. And you know, it's, it's like television ratings if enough people are streaming it, 
that could push them a little bit faster. It's really, really, a really interesting uh, uh, time to watch. But I, I don't know how, how you, uh, I don't know how they're going to measure it. You know what's going to be a real good test too is uh, Blade. Like, are you going to make the vampires turn yes. to ash? Like, are these vampires going to turn to ash, or are they going to have blood in that show? I think the I think those four characters: Blade, Moon Knight, um, Ghost Rider, and Punisher. The Midnight Suns. If they're going to do a Midnight Suns, that's where you lean R, and you yeah. start with like Moon Knight kind of dipping your toe into some of the more brutal deaths or, you know, defeating, vanquishing, that kind of stuff. However they want to call it. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm not a horror guy. Really? But... Yeah, I'm not a horror guy, but I don't I don't want to see them turning to dust. You know, I, I, that's that's the one time where I'm like, yeah, put yeah. blood in it. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's go full on. I mean, remember the old uh, 90s uh, Spider-Man cartoon where Morbius needed his plasma because they couldn't say the yes. blood, right? Yep. And, like, and that's my only... Uh, <laughs> Uh, interaction with that character. That's the only time I've ever really seen Morpheus. So, um, yeah, if they go right into the blood, I, I think it's going to make it a stronger product for them in the end. Man, what a transition, because we were just going to talk about Morbius next, and I wanted to mention in the uh, trailer, they do say blood. He does yep. say that he has a hunger for blood. So, <laughs> Not the plasma. <laughs> we still got you there, James. And speaking of Morbius, the Morbius trailer dropped on monday i did a reaction to it here on the channel i got to, i actually kind of like the trailer i mean i was i wasn't really looking forward to morbius and then i was even less looking forward to morbius and i kept pushing it back and this last trailer had enough michael keaton's vulture to make me go maybe i'm interested in this movie but the the one thing and it makes me more interested than anything is that i love spider-man and this is a character that brings us closer to the sony spider-man spider-verse the sinister six is clearly on their minds over there at sony <laughs> Steve, I know you watched the trailer. What were your thoughts on it? It didn't do much for me, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, if anything, it just, uh, you know, paint, painted Morbius as maybe, oh, possibly, is he the bad guy? Is he a villain? Are you going to are you gonna lean into being a bad guy? I don't know. I mean, it didn't, it didn't influence me one way or another, whether I want to see this movie or not. Um, for me, I'm going to wait and see what the fans think, you know, what the general word of mouth is before I decide if I want to go to the theater to see it or if I'm going to wait to stream it at, at home. Uh, I'm not saying it was a bad trailer. It just it did nothing for me. Yeah, Scotty? Have they, have they mentioned who uh, Matt Smith's character is? Because maybe I know it because it's a rumor or a leak. Yes. Can... His name is Milo, and I think he's a character that you're thinking of, but they've changed his origin so that he grew up being best friends with Morbius, yep. and they both have like the same disease, but his name is is Milo in this one. He's going to be the villain, yep. obviously. Yeah, and in the comics, the character is Hunger, and he's also a living <clears throat> yes. vampire, and he also mm -hmm. suffers from the same ailments where he can operate in the day, but tends to stick to the shade, those kind of things. But I guess it's like, um, you know, they both have these injuries. And so it heals them at the same time as cursing them. I hope they don't kill him like they did. They did with like this whole Venom Carnage thing and like just put him in one movie and then you're you're maybe done with him. Because uh, I think Sony needs those like individualized stories for their villains, I guess. Because if they're really yeah. going to keep them away from Spider-Man until the very, very end, are they all going to just have ancillary? It's like the, it's like a mirror. You know, we have Venom, we have Spider-Man, we have Morbius, now we have this guy. And it's, you know, all their villains kind of are the same in that, res that respect. I remember when uh, Tim Burton's Batman came out and I watched it with my parents and, and the movie ended and the Joker dies. Spoiler. And my mom says, Joker doesn't die. Joker, Joker doesn't die. He gets away every time. And there's this obsession with the the villain has to be dead at the end of all of these superhero movies, right? There's obviously exceptions mm -hmm. to the rule, whatever. But most of the time, the villain ends up dead at the end. And you're like, oh, well, that's that's it. I like they did like keep it going, keep it like keep this character going, make him an antagonist for for longer than just one movie. I'm with you on that. Why why have 
I don't know. It just seems like it's such a waste and lazy storytelling just to kill someone off right away when you haven't like give them an arc, give them a three movie arc, give the villain an arc with the hero. That's what I was like for just storytelling. Comics have them go on forever, and these, especially, I mean, Sony's not the MCU, but the MCU is like the comics, right? It's like a TV show. It just keeps going, right? Like King King doesn't die in the first episode of Hawkeye. Well, he did actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that they're going to rush their Spider-Verse to try to catch yes. up to like, because Marvel already has a Thanos. Now they're going to eventually have a Doctor Doom. They have a Kang. They have all these arcs already. And Sony's just like sitting over here with their Null in the corner or their Madam Web over here or, you know, like, so they're, they're rushing some of this. I got a feeling just to get up, which caught up, which Steve is par for the course for Sony. We see the first, like, the the Sam Raimi Spider Man movies they they rush in Venom they rush the third one with Venom and they have, throw in every villain and then mm-hmm. they did it again with the Amazing Spider Man they're like throw in every villain in that one and we're <laughs> gonna tease the Sinister Six like this is part of the course for Sony right Steve yeah pretty much they got a track record of that and um, <laughs> I'm a little I'm a little leery of them rushing things and uh, I don't know by all accounts that's what it looks like we're they're they're doing with this proof you know hopefully I'm wrong hopefully uh. Hopefully they have their plan and we'll we'll all it'll all make sense to us after we see this movie, but maybe not. Who knows? Yeah, who know? this trailer did I think the effects look great. But one thing we gotta talk about is uh Spider-Man in this movie. Recent rumors, Scotty, have suggested that the post credit scene for Morbius will include possibly an Andrew Garfield or Toby Maguire Spider-Man appearing in the post credit do you think that fits do you think it would be actually them or would it be a variant of them and would you be i mean i think you would be but would you be keen to see one of those two spider-man in a post-credit scene for morbius it's tough and i hate that they have him say we are venom and i hate that michael (laughs) keaton is focused uh i think if it's gonna be anybody it's gonna be toby because then that links a Venom. Yeah. So Morbius may have seen the whole debacle between, you know, that Venom and Toby, but that still doesn't correlate why Vulture's there. Or is it a variant that, you know, it's weird. It, the, the one thing though, Steve, is variants now get them out of any situation they want. It's a variant. That's all they have to do now. Well, it's a you know it, it's an easy card for them to play, but yep. maybe that gets us the better story. I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, we talk about DC all the time. It's like, you know, Batman. We don't want Batman being with any other character, but we're gonna go watch Aquaman that's connected to this. That's connected to that. So maybe this Sony verse is just the Sony verse, and that's it. And it doesn't have to be connected. And because we saw Venom obviously go into the MCU, but then he leaves the MCU. So maybe the Sony verse is its own universe in the multiverse. And maybe Spider-Man doesn't exist in that universe. Uh, but like I said, Andrew Garfield just denied again that he's coming back as Spider-Man. And in that denial, he said, no one's ever going to believe me anymore. So he acknowledges the fact that he does it. But So I don't know if it's him. I don't know if it's Tobey Maguire. I think if Tobey Maguire shows up, it's more likely to be in Doctor Strange 2. Uh, if we do get him, I think mm-hmm. that's where he will land. I don't think the Sony verse is where you're going to see him. And maybe you won't even see Andrew Garfield. We talked about it, I think, last week or the week before. This is where you got to bring up Miles Morales, man. Miles Morales is the Spider Man of the Sony verse. I think that's. Although, in, in, again, though, in, in Morbius, though, we see Spider Man and it says murderer on the, on the poster, right? On the. T- on the sidewalk when he's walking on a building or whatever. So I don't know if they know where this takes place in. And I, I'm not even sure Sony cares. Dude, I think it would be so cool if he does have the ability to teleport through dimensions. And at the end of his movie, just like that venom, whatever situation post credit, he gets pulled in or he accidentally does something where he's trying to run for his life and gets put in here. I don't know why he gets caught or why he's allowing himself to be arrested either. That's kind of like he could just escape. I don't know. Well, I think he's a he's 
they're playing Morbius as a good guy, right? So a so good guy. Yeah, I think a good guy would allow mm. himself to be arrested or turn himself in. I think that's and then obviously as the movie goes on, he will no longer be he will no longer be in there. Um as Steve just smashes something in anger <laughs> over Morbius coming out. <laughs> I love the question. But do you guys though, have any other we're... final thoughts before we move on from from Dr. Morbius? Yeah, the questions that he's muted. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I thought I unmuted. With um him being arrested, does that to me that kind of ties into his the, the scenes that they showed in the trailer with uh, uh Vulture, yeah, with Bruce mm -hmm. uh, Bruce Willis, Michael Keaton. Um yep. you know, so that I get however they get to that point, I don't know, but I think that's that's their connection. Is some something in prison. You're laughing. And it's so confusing because you know, Marvel Marvel has to omit things from their trailers and hide things where Sony right now is just like, we have no idea what's going on. So they can just put whatever in. They don't have to hide anything in the trailers because nobody knows any of the answers yet. Mm -hmm. Hiding in plain sight. <laughs> That's so true. Yep. Yep. Absolutely true. Okay, guys. We are going to move on and we're going to stick with the dark and gritty and weird that is now becoming the MCU Werewolf by Night. Oh, are you guys familiar with Werewolf by Night at all? Scotty, are you? Not really, man. Not at all. No. Which is good. I mean, a lot of some of some of the Marvel movies I've enjoyed the most are, are the characters well, and properties that I didn't well, know anything about. It is going. To, it's looking. To... Oh. And he's gone. That's a good place to pick up, anyway. So. Yeah, come back. So this is going to be a, I think it's just a one-off Halloween special on Disney Plus, directed by. Batman. Directed by who? Directed by who? <laughs> he's doing the Batman movie. He did a bunch of Pixar stuff. I mean, he's done everything. Star Trek, whatever. He's done it all. And he's. This is going to be his first directorial uh, outing. Is doing Werewolf by Night again. A, a special that's going to be on Halloween. Uh, on Disney Plus, uh, to me, guys, this is—I love where they're going with this because we got Moon Knight coming, Werewolf by Night, uh, Morbius, which is not technically MCU, whatever, but it's still Morbius, and then Blade to kind of like rope them all in and kind of be all of it. They're getting weird, man. Marvel is getting like into this horror, the demons and stuff, and I'm absolutely—I am all for it. Bring it. The crazier, the better, man. We've got the superheroes. That's fine. Give us every aspect you can. I love this idea of a werewolf coming into the MCU. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh... but what do they do with them? You know, what, where, where do all these occult characters, where do we, you know, how do they get unified or tied together unless they're fighting each other, you know, fighting amongst themselves? What else do you do with them? That that's my biggest question. Yeah, they got to build out that whole supernatural uh, side of these things. And then that'll be Blade, Moon Knight's universe with Punisher coming in later, Ghost Rider. Hopefully, hopefully. And they may, may be able to live right there on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping this is. That's what I'm hoping this is. I hope it's not as graphic- as the the netflix marvel stuff but i'm hoping they're just a tad under that and i think that's the supernatural element they live together in their own confined space and maybe if you need them to cross over into she hulk or into shang chi 3 or whatever you do that but until then you don't have to i just love that they've opened the door to this and and the best part is with guardian and all the way back to guardians of the galaxy being a success it's opened the door for them to be able to get crazy and wild with their weirdest material and their weirdest IP that they have right now. It's, it's awesome. Yep. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. But do you guys have any, like, what do you think of Giacchino directing this? Like he's a, he's a composer. He's obviously friends with, with Matt Reeves and KJ Abrams and he's worked on a million movies, but this is going to be his directorial debut. What else? Like, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, this is bold. 
Yeah. Definitely bold. But the story, you know, um, depending on cat, I feel like casting is going to be a big part of this too, being that the character is native. Um, a lot of people resonated with the Echo character recently because mm-hmm. she's deaf and all that. So I think that Marvel is really good about the way they cast people. I think this could potentially be an unknown that like blows up in the MCU and he could be a constant uh, problem that these characters have to deal with. Yeah, I have my biggest concern with this though, guys is uh, CG. I like the Rick Baker, like werewolf, like, Oh, that's gross. But you know, when you watch the, the, the Van Helsing or the new, or mm. the new Van Helsing movie with Hugh Jackman, which is not new at all anymore, but I'm going to call it the new one. It, mm. the, when CG takes over, it takes, for me, it takes something away from werewolves. And if this is coming out in Halloween, there's no other, I can't see them doing this any other way. And that's my one concern is that it might look a little bit hollow if they do werewolves in full, full computer generated uh, animated characters. Yeah, man, stuff's come a long way, though. Yeah, that's it, true. I think it could be a test, and I think you know they could. It could be another one of those like Pixar water moments, like oh, they do water now, <laughs> or uh, <laughs> dude, Encanto. I don't know if you guys have seen Encanto, but that one's the yeah. oh, they do eyes now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, CG is a definite risk. Because it can look wonky or out of place mm-hmm. next to all the other characters if he's the only CGI yeah. on screen. Is there any indication of what kind of budget this production is going to get since it's not a theatrical release movie and it's not a limited run series? It's it's a special. So that 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 to me that'll be the a bigger test is how much money they're going to put yeah. into it, and then that will affect how good the CG is. You got to think it's going to be a pretty decent budget. It is Marvel. It's on Disney Plus. I don't think they're going to cheap out. It won't be, you know, the same budget they get if this was a theatrical film, but I don't think it's going to be cheap either. Like, you know, you're not going to look at a Disney Channel budget. I think you're going to get something a little bit closer to Iron Man 1. <laughs> what if he's like, uh, what this if was so long ago that that's the budget they have for Disney Plus now? Uh, you know, if, if it is a good, if it is a good story and good characters, I don't think the CG will detract too much from it. What if the moon is only the moon that he uh, transforms under is only once a year and the special is something that they do once a year and he just kind of comes out and causes havoc that in the special like they have a new Halloween special every year now. (laughs) That'd be amazing. I love that they're doing a Halloween special. We got the Guardians Christmas special. Bring it, man. Bring it. I love it. I love it all. I forgot Just about that Halloween. Give us all the specials the we can Holiday see. specials. Yeah. Can't beat it. All right. Let's move on to a Doctor Strange 2. Uh-oh. Look out. Doctor Strange 2 is coming. There is uh, a reported runtime right now, guys, of two hours and 28 minutes, making it. 30 minutes shorter than the Batman movie, which is on its way into release. It's <laughs> so short. But if you look, actually, here is Doctor Strange as Batman. Can't be <laughs> Batman Beyond. Uh, uh, this movie, I, I just I think this good movie is going to make a ton of money. It's exciting. Uh, there's going to be cameos after cameo after cameo. Endless onslaught. Ryan Reynolds is saying he is not in it. Hmm. Um, but, you know, Taron Edgerton is not saying he wants to play Wolverine. So I'm guessing that either Wolverine. He said he wants to. He wants to. So either he's not playing Wolverine in this, or he or he is, and he's just telling people early. Uh, Ryan Reynolds just keeps denying that this is it, but it's two hours and twenty eight minutes. Steve, how do you feel about that runtime? You taking your kids? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they handled uh, Spider Man uh, No Way Home just fine. And uh, for me, like that one, how how long was that? Two two hours and forty was it? Yeah, it was longer than I thought. We talked about this a few yeah. weeks ago. Yeah, it was like two forty. Yeah. yeah, and it to me it didn't feel like it. You know? For real. Um, so I'm not I'm not overly I'm not too worried about the the runtimes anymore. Uh if it's two hours and thirty minutes, and so be it. Um my biggest test is that if I bring my wife, because uh, anytime she ever saw an X-Men movie, she always fell asleep during an X-Men movie. So mm-hmm. if she can stay away for Doctor Strange, then I it's all good. Scotty, how about you? 
dude, this you're gonna blink and this movie's gonna be over. I feel like <laughs> that's way too short. I don't know, man. Uh, I'm, I'm worried with with the runtime, but a lot of people might, you know, a lot of the characters that they're expecting aren't gonna get a significant amount of st- screen time, and I think a lot of people are building themselves up to expect that, and they might be a little disappointed. Oh yeah, dude, I am terrified. I'm terrified of all of these like specific characters that have already been leaked and it, it just being something that Marvel put out there to subvert, subvert the expectations, man. It is going to gut fans. It happened recently with the Kira. Like, I don't know if you guys were onto the Kira rumors with book of Boba (laughs) Fett, but a lot of people were like, yeah, what? No, they won't. And then they didn't. And now it's like, Man, that show sucked. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like you gotta with a sh- with a with a movie like this and all of the implications. Like, I'm not worried about spoilers because it's all out of context. It could get, literally go anyway. But the runtime worries me a little bit. Yeah, it seems kind of short for what it is, especially with Spider Man being 240 and it just having two other mm-hmm. Spider Man in it and a couple of villains. Like, this looks like it's going to be insane. Oh, I, I, I got to add to this, though, guys, is, is uh, Elizabeth Olsen reportedly signed a seven uh, pick, seven year, seven picture deal with the MCU now. She's going to be along, she's going to be along for a lot longer. Uh, and so part of the rumors is that she's going to be having her own, uh, her own solo movie after this, the Scarlet Witch solo movie so i don't know how this ends for her you know we heard that she's the villain of this how it goes where they're going from this but i think that's a character that after wandavision and she's very powerful even more powerful than we we knew her before and i think she's going to reverse her spell on mutants i think that rumor is that theory i guess is very likely to happen that that she's gonna have a big big role going forward and again again you brought this up last week scotty if if magneto's in this there's your connection right there with them and i think you know it makes sense for her to be along for a long time so i apologize if this is actually what they do and you had to hear it from me first but the movie could literally be titled the scarlet witch house of m this one her solo movie Oh, oh yes. Yeah. If if they're going to bring all the mutants back and reverse it, it can just literally be the Scarlet Witch, House of M, and it'll be her living with all her mutant family. And then eventually she'll realize, like, okay, I did this. Now I have like that's when we'll get the no more mutants thing. But I don't know. It's so weird that they're gonna like if they introduce mutants that way and she creates them, I think that's a big rumor. It's gonna downplay the no more mutants line is it not no i think the no more mutants line steve has already occurred i oh. think she did that um and I, yeah and she's and in wandavision when she thinks back she's not thinking back truly from a certain point of view mm, i think she's I already like that. done that and i think maybe those events like something has already caused her to say that so that's why there's no more mutants going around now and she's going to reverse that going forward that's what i'm thinking steve where do you see that happening? Like to me, we've seen a very clear timeline of where she has her powers, discovered how powerful she is, and we see the progression from point A to point B. I don't know. I don't. I don't see Wanda in um, Age of Ultron being able to do no more mutants or you know, anything, anything to that scale. I think be- it's before that. Uh, eh. So because she's omnipresent, uh, like it would be like the Scarlet Witch that's inside the Mind Stone, essentially, because she's. Yeah. You know, time doesn't affect this character. So, yeah, it would be her. It would be us realizing that the Scarlet Witch isn't Wanda Maximoff. It's the Scarlet Witch, right? Okay. I, if I that mean, makes sense. <laughs> and I, I think the, the one thing too is, in t- I don't think they'll worry too much about the continuity of it all. They're like, no, that the, the Infinity stuff is over with. This is how we're doing mm-hmm. it now, and they're going to move on. They don't need to worry about it because it doesn't have to necessarily make sense. Because they retcon things all the time in these movies, right? They, they just do what they want to do, do they? They kind of do. One except division retcon, if you, except Quicksilver. So, well, um, but that apparently, and then I, I saw this where they said if if the 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 no more mutants has already occurred, then the Ralph Boner crap actually works a lot better because that actually is a mutant with those powers. He just doesn't know he's a mutant with those powers or something. I don't know what the hell is going on. That doesn't make sense either. Ralph Boner <laughs> sucked. That was the worst. Yeah. That that was uh I don't like it when you when you lie to the audience. That's what I'll say. I don't like the 
I don't like when you flat out lie for the sake of teasing people along. You can lie, but you can't yeah. lie like that. That was a, a misstep. That was not She-Hulk. It was that was the Marvel's first big misstep, I thought. <laughs> Mephisto lives. <laughs> Hopefully. What? And I I still think that uh I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying on that. But I think that uh fans also take it a little personal on yes. some of this stuff and that if you look at the bigger part of the story it kind of still makes sense um because agatha really explains it to us all she does it quickly but she explains that the corpse is on another continent and that she used the multiverse and the fact that like this recognizable like this person recognizes themselves as pietro and that's all that mattered to her in that moment was that like, oh, geez, this guy's my brother. He's just from a different whatever. Mm. She convinced herself of that. So this is this is going a little off topic here. But do you, do you think that they're going to reveal that in somewhere within the multiverse that you know Wanda's kids were real? You know, um, and, and that's why she's looking for them, trying to find them, because what I got out of uh out of the show, you know, the kids were, uh, were, were a figment of her imagination, something she created, mm -hmm. um, you know, like the, the fantasy kids that you know, she, she wanted, but mm -hmm. again, they, they were never real. So were they real in another universe? And that's why she's trying to find them or, you know, I'm, I'm just not sure what they're, what they're trying to accomplish there with, with, with the, the, the quest for the kids. I think now, and they're, they're setting it up for comic book stuff, but it's cool. They're telling their own stories to start and then they're bringing in the comic accuracy. And I think what they're going to do is, and you know, this is spoilers for people who haven't read the comics, but the children in the comics are eventually revealed to be aspects of Mephisto's soul. Mm -hmm. Not saying that these ones she has created are, but I think the ones she hears at the end of the show call out to her are. So oh, I think okay. now demons have impersonated her children. That's what's making her go on this quest. They're using her quest to break down the multiverse and, and escape. Trying to manipulate her. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully that's revealed. But like the, the Mephisto watch is still on. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know, the devil character. He's one of the most controversial things you can put into movies because of other countries and religions, obviously. Yeah. It'll be very interesting to see if he is portrayed as a devil because that's literally who he is. But a lot of, a lot of big things happening in this movie. There's like four different Dr. Stranges that he's going to play all of them in the same film. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to be nuts. Is that I there's so much like this it's it's and two hours and twenty eight minutes of craziness. Mm -hmm. Just sheer like insanity. Do you guys know have I think they released some plot details, but does anyone know what the actual plot is? Yeah. Uh I mean I think I have a pretty good handle on what it is. Uh Wanda's obviously searching for her children. She is, I believe, able to mentally go into these other dimensions and possess you know maybe that shuma gorath demon or whatever it is but she can't physically move through the dimensions so that's why she's chasing after or using the demons to chase after american america chavez because she is able to punch holes through dimensions she's going to use her to go find her kids that's ultimately i think her mission and what really just keeps continuing to set off the multiverse of madness I think it's hinted at that her whole orchard of white flowers and Vundagar mountain. Like, I think that could actually be the mountain where the dark hold was made. And she just has this illusion again, just like Westview. And when Dr. Strange shows up there, I'm hoping all this trailer stuff's like the first 15 minutes of the movie, dude. Yeah. I think it could be just right off the bat. So, so how do you think that would tie into, you know, what, what the trailers are really, uh, pushing that you know dr strange lost control of a spell he's lost control of things how does that tie into wanda's uh search yeah that's the that is the biggest question because she i think will ultimately be a bigger threat and maybe she's what's called obviously i think she's what's causing the multiverse to break down ultimately so the spell that they're referring to, do you think it's the one from Sp from Spider-Man or is it something completely different? 
I think it's something we don't know about yet. The whole uh, you tampered with the fabric of time and that kind of stuff. The the warnings from Wong. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's the Spider Man stuff. I even think it could be like he was never meant to look through time at all the hundred and one million four hundred thousand. Like I don't think he was ever supposed to see that stuff. Mm. Like he wasn't supposed to know that outcome. They could go all the way back to that. Yeah. I don't know. There's so much at, at play. Here. <laughs> how do you yeah. think, though, that this is going to. Well, this right this here is in? Defender Strange. Like, this is the Supreme yeah. Defender Strange from the but comics. How, how does the multiverse of madness play into the greater MCU? Uh, it brings mutants in, Secret Wars. It's really, I think, just meant to introduce mutants and give Wanda the her omnipresence as like an omega level threat maybe okay. i don't know i'm speculating so much right now <laughs> well that's all you can do is speculate yeah. right yeah <laughs> that's what... do you see vision in this white no. vision i mean yeah man we a bomb to drop on her i don't know i do you James, do you even think they're going to reveal who that hologram is that they added into the end of the show if he is a hologram? Do <laughs> you think that's Doctor Strange just showing up right at the beginning? It's got to be. A lot of people thought it could have been White Vision. Hmm. I'm curious how much of WandaVision is going to tie in aside from what we already see in the trailers of... Yeah. Look, I'm not here to talk about West. Like That might be... That and the kids might be the only thing that we... We get out of it. I'm right. like two hours and twenty eight minutes. If this is about Wanda finding her kids, it's called Doctor Strange, right? It's not the Wanda, the Wanda movie. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, there's something else going on, and yeah, bringing in mutants. It, I hope that there's more to it than just that, though. You know, I hope that they there's more to this movie than just this is how they bring mutants into the. And I know that might that might be an unpopular opinion. I don't know, but I mm-hmm. I'm looking for a little bit more than just an excuse to bring in everyone's favorite. Uh, wolverine and prof x and all that stuff i'm gonna have a hard time just getting over you know whether this connects to loki or not because in my head for the you know as soon as i saw that loki finale i'm like oh that ties into doctor strange totally and you know all the rumors about what spider-man no way home was going to be i thought that was going to tie in and not so much right so now i don't know what to expect yeah what is tying all of these shows together what is the threshold in loki what what spell in spider-man really had the most effect what one thing dr strange did had the most detrimental effect on the fabric of time i I hope this should this movie answers a lot of that stuff and it could just be as something as simple as a, a story that you know sets up strange as a hero introducing all the major threats kang like the whole show us the whole multiverse now. Mm-hmm. It's a lot yeah. for two hours, two and a half hours. It's a lot for two hours, but I mean, the way the MCU works is this is one movie, and they're going to be doing this over a course of time, right? And who knows when the multiverse comes to a conclusion? This might just open it up, and uh, you know, we keep going from there. We'll find out soon. Let's keep the ball going. Our final topic of the day. Um, I don't even have a I don't have a graphic for it guys. I'll put up this one. We are going to talk about there's a new movie coming out this uh week. It's going it's flying under the radar. Especially here, we don't care about it. Uh, it's called The Batman. We'll be going 10 what? p.m. Eastern time on Thursday and Friday at 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern. Talking about The Batman right here. Non-spoilers Thursday, spoilers on Friday. Scotty, you're going to go see it at some point uh, this week, I'm going to see it on some point this week. Steve, you're seeing it within the next decade, as far as I know. <laughs> Saturday, it's like two days off. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm normally the guy that's there first opening <laughs> night, like first showing, and it's killing me to have to wait till Saturday. But that's what it is. <laughs> but here you are. You're not a true fan, and okay. we understand that. We understand that you can't be everywhere you want to be. No, but the Batman's coming. The reviews are uh they're in now right the reviews are, are hitting it we're seeing things uh and i'm gonna check on the um rotten tomatoes site i don't know if you guys, i don't really care for rotten tomatoes but this is the aggregate it's 88 percent currently it's certified fresh it just got the certified fresh at 88 percent 
on Rotten Tomatoes. Not 90. Mm-hmm. It's not in the 90s. It's not in Black Panther territory. It's not even in Wonder Woman territory at this point. Peacemaker far exceeded it, although Peacemaker is a TV show and you can't compare apples to oranges that way. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you see 88%. I, the way I'm seeing this, guys, is I think maybe people might be expecting too much from this movie. And I don't know what that means necessarily. But when you have expectations and you think a movie is going to be up here and it delivers just a little bit lower, then you think it's even worse than it is. But again, this is Rotten Tomatoes. Some of these might be three out of five, some of them four out of five, some 2.5 out of five. You don't know what it is. You don't know what they're no. saying. A, a Rotten review might actually not even be Rotten. It might just be like, yeah, I liked it. It just wasn't my favorite. So you look at 88%, Steve. Does that hinder your expectations, your enthusiasm going into this movie? Not really. I don't pay attention too much to uh, you know reviews and whatnot. You know, I want to know just you know, thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah, you like it. Yeah, you didn't like it. Okay, that's that, that's fine. Um, you know, if it's overwhelmingly negative reception, then yeah, that's going to affect how I how, how much I want to see a movie. Um, but yeah, I don't want to get into specifics of you know what didn't you like about the movie or what did you enjoy. Just give me the quick yay or nay, uh, and that's how word of mouth. Is good. So that's how that's going to determine how I see uh, Morbius. Right, Batman. I got a pretty good expectation of a uh, 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 pretty good idea of what to expect. So like I said, I've already bought my ticket. So that, that's fine. So I'm not, I'm not going to worry about rotten tomatoes. <laughs> and Scott, are you returning your ticket? Oh, <laughs> uh, no, I was just going to say, it looks like I got some burner accounts to go create real fast. <laughs> Hang on. I got to dump some votes in here. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, I think the coolest part about DC and I keep saying it is that this is a new universe. I literally have no expectations because I have nothing to compare it to. We don't have a Superman to compare it to. We don't have a, we have no other character in this universe that we're going to be under a microscope. Like, okay, why is he doing this? Where is this person? It's just new. And I think a lot of other IPs could benefit from this type of a multiversal situation. And it puts a lot less stress on, the actors it puts a lot less stress on the directors he can be much more creative like i scream from the rooftops let creators create they should release the air cut they should release director's cuts like when did that stop they used to do director's cuts all the time there's director's cuts for aliens there's director's cuts for predator like what what is the big like you know well i don't know when did it become taboo to have a director's cut i guess well, so from yeah, everything Matt Reeves is my... saying, is is this is his director's cut? Awesome. That's what he's saying. Now, we'll talk about this a little bit. There was there is a word, and I think he's doing this to temper expectations that he cut a scene with Barry Ke- Cohen, Cohen, uh, and and it was at the end of the movie, unseen prisoner with the Riddler, and apparently it's a very fun scene, and he cut this scene. However, he said that there's a scene with Barry Cohen earlier in the movie that he's actually already in a scene earlier in the movie, but he cut this really fun scene at the end of the movie. And I think he's doing this to temper expectations for the Joker being in this movie, because I think it's kind of blown up. And, you know, if we post a a video on this channel, it gets, you know, 10 times more views than a video without the Joker about Batman on this channel. And I could tell you, you know, the 75 views for a Catwoman video versus our 900 views for a Joker video. One of them's <laughs> actually in the movie. One of them is in the movie. They're, they're, like, you know, one is actually about something. The other one is a speculation. But people have said that. And I think he's doing that so that when you go see this movie, if the Joker is not in it as much as you want, you'll be like, well, he he told us that. So mm-hmm. that that's what I'm thinking with that. But for me, I... I look. I don't even look at these reviews. I think it's you know what the hell's the point? I'm a Batman fan. I'm going to go see Batman. I bought my ticket. I'm not going to let you know Rotten Tomatoes skew my my view of it when I'm in the theater as well, which is something that I I, I think does happen. I think when you look at a movie and it has 99 percent of Rotten Tomatoes and you go into it and you're like that was fine, all of a sudden you're more inclined to have more disdain for that movie because it's supposed to be really good and amazing, but you're like, no, it's not. It was fine. And and that's what, and, and vice versa, right? When uncharted gets 39% and you watch in the theater, you're like, I really like that. I'm going to give it 99%. Screw you critics. You don't know what you're talking about. And I think that's what we see here. And I'm very curious, Scotty, to see what the audience score is heading into the weekend. Yeah. That's what I typically try to do. I try to wait for initial box office numbers above all because money talks and then i'll like yeah and then most of the youtubers or the people i respect the opinions of that have done reviews that are spoilery like i watch them 
I'll even watch that stuff before I go into a movie. So I'm kind of weird like that. Um, spoilers don't really pull me out of a thing. Um, a lot of times they actually get me more hyped. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're you're big on spoilers. Steve, are you big on spoilers? No, I try to avoid them as much as possible. That's why I like mm-hmm. going to see the movie on opening night so that mm-hmm. I don't get those spoilers, right? And then I'm always careful not to give them. Um, but, yeah, so I, I try to avoid as much information as possible. Some things I will avoid, like the Kenobi show is something that I'm not too keen about too mu- hearing too much about anymore, but it's, you know, funny what gets leaked and what doesn't get leaked either. You know, mm-hmm. if shows, if people really want to know this stuff, man, it's, it's going to come out, unfortunately. A, it'll be okay. I, yeah. 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 I don't, I find with leaks, especially, I, I think leaks are, they're planned. I think a lot of leaks are like, let's leak this and let's see how this I tracks. Think, I think toys are worse. I think toys, toys have wor- ruined more movies than any yeah, leaker they just, yeah. I know. They just leaked all of the all of the the wardrobes and costumes for Thor, right? The new oh, Thor yeah. movie just got leaked in oh. action figures and Lego and stuff. It's like, okay, fine. Yep. Yeah, Toys that's ruin why everything, not... man. Merchandising. Yeah, and that's why I'm sh- I'm sure Baby Yoda would have made a ton of money on uh, on that Christmas when Mandalorian came out that first year. But yep. thank goodness they didn't release. Like I've said this before, but if you don't, if Baby Yoda reveal doesn't happen at the end of that episode. That episode, maybe even the entire show wasn't looked at the same way. Like, that was massive. That was a massive thing. Like, that episode was fine. It's an okay episode. It's not amazing. But Baby Yoda shows up, and you're like, you take a step back, and you say, okay, that is, what am I in Mm -hmm. for now? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, uh, Batman, guys, I'm not going to hold you much longer. We'll wrap it up on that. All of us were very disappointed in the Batman. We're not looking forward to it. I think it's probably a piece of crap. 88% hogwash. That means 8.8 people. That means eight adults and like an eight year old all like this movie. Uh, and that's pretty good for me. That's, you know, we always, you got to look at it that way, right? If something gets 50% of Ron Thomas, that means five out of 10, half the people who went to go see that movie liked it. That's not really that bad when you think about Star Wars. All right. <laughs> We'll wrap it up right now. Steve, I know you have nothing to plug, but thanks for joining me on Super Tuesday. And Scotty, why don't you plug away your YouTube channel? Yeah, it's Hawks Holocrons. I do a lot of gaming streams over there, but I'm hyped about the new Star Wars stuff that's coming, especially uh, the Acolyte. I want to get into doing a lot of High Republic talk, too. So if people want to see reviews on the comics, the bu- the books, things like that, um, nobody i know on youtube is really talking about that stuff anymore so i'm gonna try to get back into that because there's the new show coming that is rumored to be high republic centric and i just want to hype that up a little bit because i think people are getting misconstrued with like the stranger things rumors of it all this high republic era is a time where the dark side's not really existent so a group of adolescent Jedi or light side force users discovering something like that in a stranger things vibe. Give me, give me that. That just yeah. sounds cool to me. So I'm hyping up high Republic. Come on over. If you're into it, not a lot of people are. <laughs> <laughs> Have you read all the books? It. I'm up there. Yeah. I'm working on the second phase right now, but spoilers. I, I look up, I look up all that stuff. The newest book that came out this month actually has Yoda flashbacks. So getting not and and this is some credit to Daniel Jose Older. He's the guy that wrote it. He said he didn't want to have Yoda just be a mouthpiece of Jedi quips and Jedi riddles. So he does attempt to try to give some depth to the character. I actually haven't looked any of it up yet because I'm terrified. <laughs> uh, it's just Slippery slope, bro. <laughs> I'm going to check it. I haven't had a chance to read The High Republic yet. I, I want to, so I'll check out your video there. So check out Hawks Hawk Runners. Check out Steve's Steve Notes. What's, what do you call it? Steve Steve's. That's your thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm as deep as a kiddie pool. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much. This is Super Tuesday. Thanks for watching us. Uh, thanks for joining us. I hope you liked and subscribed to the video. Uh, and until next time, may you be the master of your own universe. <laughs>